Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week we're hearing about plenty of stripers still as far north as Salem, New Hampshire. We're hearing about some albies showing up in places where we haven't really had any albies for most of this year. We're hearing about great tog fishing across the entire southern part of the region. And we're hearing about some really big stripers in western Long Island Sound. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So let's start things off with the Albi report, which is what we've been doing for the last two months, and I can't help but wonder if this might be the last one. I don't think it will be. I think we'll probably do one or two more, but things are definitely winding down. Uh, I talked to Doug out on uh, Martha's Vineyard from Dick's Bait and Tackle, and he said that this was probably the worst Albi year they've seen in a long time. Now, it's funny because we were kind of considering the vineyard area to be one of the best, and it was. Um, but it just kind of goes to show that this year's season has been fickle at best. Uh, so things are winding down out there. There are still some pods of fish uh, charging around the island. It seems mostly on the north and east sides of the island. Um, also, up along the Falmouth shoreline and even some up and, up and uh, within the Elizabeth Islands. Uh, but those schools have scattered and they're getting smaller and they're getting harder to nail down. There are still fish there. Now the place where I started hearing about Albies kind of randomly and kind of out of nowhere this week is Buzzards Bay. Uh, seemed like a good push of fish showed up around Marion and started making their way toward New Bedford. Um, and that was over the weekend and some pretty good feeds uh, showing up in there. And that was on Sunday afternoon. Since then, I haven't heard about them popping back up, so they could be anywhere, but it's good to hear that they're in that area, and probably, you know, they're probably somewhere in there, somewhere between Cuddy Hunk and Newport, somewhere in that range, or maybe they took a left turn and headed offshore, who knows. Uh, but there were some good pods of fish in that area. Uh, going throughout most of Rhode Island, you know, the areas where you expect to see them, like Sakonet and places like that, is still really pretty much barren. Uh, a friend of mine was out togging from the shore in Newport on Sunday, and he said he saw a few pods of albies go by that were within casting range of the shore, but they were small pods. And then out in the western part of the state, you know, at the Breachways and Watch Hill, it's the same deal. The, there are pods of fish there, and it's probably the best place in Rhode Island to go and think you have a reasonable shot at hooking up. But the schools are getting smaller, they're getting more scattered, and they're just getting harder to target. Um, right now, probably the best place in all of New England is still in Long Island Sound, um, and probably still central western Long Island Sound. Um, but last week, you know, we were talking about a pretty ferocious action with, uh, fish, you know, crushing topwater plugs and big feeds, big, you know, hundreds of fish kind of crashing bait schools all at once. Reports I'm hearing now are saying that those schools have really broken up into smaller pods of like 10 to 30 fish. And which makes them a lot harder to target, makes it a little bit more of a frustrating day as, you know, you're playing bumper boats with everybody trying to get on these small pods of fish, but they're there. Um, there are also still fish in around the Norwalk Islands, there are still fish uh, up around New Haven Harbor, and there's still some isolated pods out around the Connecticut River as well. Uh, as more and more of these cold nights come and go, they're probably going to start to exit more and more. However, um, as Greg from Red Top was quick to point out, these cold nights also can fire off some intense morning action for Albies. So if you get a pretty good beat on where some are in the afternoon, if you can be back there in the morning, eh, probably a pretty good shot you're going to find a pretty heavy feed. Um, as far as Benito go, I haven't heard a single story this week uh, Benito related. I would have to guess that some of those little you know, Snickers bar ones are still around uh, Watch Hill area and maybe kind of going over toward Fishers, but... In my mind, you know, those little tiny bones probably aren't even worth chasing around. Uh, I didn't hear anything from the vineyard area this week, so um, that's, the, uh, that's the little tuna report for this week. Now let's move over into the freshwater report. And freshwater really is kind of coming into its own right now. Um, let's talk to Greg from Red Top. Talk to a few other guys I know that fish the Cape. And uh, action for both bass and trout has been really good. The stocking is over. Um, they've completed their fall stocking, and all the ponds that are going to get a dose have gotten a dose. Action has really picked up for trout, 
And one thing that I know from my experience is fishing on the Cape is that at this time of the year, especially right now, like these last few nights have been pretty cold. It's the first few like really cold nights we've had. And that often triggers some of these brown trout uh, in these ponds to sort of feel like they have to get ready to spawn, even though I don't think these stocked trout ever really successfully spawn. So if you can find some inflowing water, you know, a river flowing in, uh, you, it's, a, it's a good spot to look around for brown trout. A lot of times they'll congregate around these inflowing waters, kind of thinking that they're going to go up there and try to spawn, and that makes them a little easier to target. So that's something to keep an eye on um, if you're out there on the Cape looking for some trout. Uh, Bass-wise, the night bite's still very good. Personally, I'm a big fan of these full moon nights. I like to go out and, you know, wade the shallows or maybe hop in the boat and throw some big wake baits or whopper ploppers or something like that. You've got a really good shot at getting a nice sized fish because these fish go, are starting to get into their fall patterns now. They're starting to try to bulk up for the winter time and when they're bulking up, they're easier to catch. Um, I didn't hear any reports freshwater wise at all from Rhode Island, um, but as I was saying last week, you know, we're all kind of in the same zone. So it's reasonable to assume that uh, you know, the bass on the Cape are going to exhibit similar, similar behaviors to what you're going to see in Rhode Island and Connecticut. Out in Connecticut, um, trout action has been really good on the TMAs. It's been really good on the Farmington. It's been great in all of these ponds that have been recently stocked. So the trout action is documented and, and good. Um, not hearing as much bass-wise, uh, but again, if it's going on on the Cape and we know that it is, then um, it's reasonable to assume that it's going to be good out in Connecticut as well, especially southern Connecticut. Um, this is a great time of year, as I've already said, to target a big largemouth or a big smallmouth, and I really like to do it at night. Um, I recommend you do that this week. And now let's hop over to Massachusetts, where the striped bass is still king of the ring. Um, we're hearing good reports throughout most of the state, pretty much the entire state, actually. Uh, I talked to James Jukes up on the North Shore, and he said he went up as far as Salem, New Hampshire and found plenty of fish, just mostly small fish. And that's been kind of the name of the game from Salem, New Hampshire down to Boston. It's a lot more schooly fish now than there are keepers. Few fish in the low 30 inch range being taken. Uh, James did say, you know, if you're out in the evening or the morning and you're starting to see good numbers of fish, if you tie a teaser on, you're going to get a lot of doubles. He's sent me two pictures here uh, of doubled up, you know, small stripers. Uh, action very good and he said you know this is what they expect to see at this time of the year and he expects to continue to catch fish for at least another week or two if not more um, in the Plum Island area. Out on the Cape there's still some good bass running the outer beaches um, and there's not that many guys out there targeting them but you know needlefish, sluggos, same things that are always seem to be working out there, bucktails um, and slender swimmers, they're getting some fish, they're getting, you know, slot fish, they're getting some schoolies in there, and believe it or not, they're getting some really nice fish too, some fish, um, you know, well into the 40 inch class. So that's something to keep an eye on if you're a surf guy and you're heading out that way. Uh, this is also a good time of year to fish like the Monomoy Rips, and I have heard some good reports from there. There's been some decent sized, mostly slot fish in that area as well. Um, and then the other thing I heard is that the surf bite on the vineyard has continued to pick up. So there's decent numbers of bass around the island right now. Nothing of great size that I'm hearing about, but fish indefinitely into the slot. And um, there's squid and there's bunker around, so that's kind of drawing more of these fish in. It's also keeping alive that big bluefish bite that was happening out there to kind of wrap up the derby. And um, it seems to be continuing and there's no reason to, to think that it won't continue uh, for another week. So you got a good shot at getting some slot bass out there, and you got a good shot at getting some big bluefish. Uh, up inside the canal, Greg from Red Top says it's, you know, things are starting to come into like a accelerated version of the migration. Fish are coming in, they're spending a tide or two, or at most a couple of days, and then they're heading out the West End and heading out into Buzzards Bay. So you're getting a constant influx now of new fish. Uh, they they're ranging in sizes from, you know, little 14 and 15 inch fish up to fish that are well into the 30 pound class. Um, and even last week, you know, there were some really big fish caught, big, you know, fish up into the 50 pound class. So you just don't know what's going to go through there. Uh, things are going to start to accelerate. So it's going to start to 
it's going to start to feel like the end is coming, and it is. But I can tell you from my experience, I've been fishing the canal for, I don't even know. I think I started fishing the canal in 1997, so you can do the math for me there. It's a long time. Um, and I've seen it time and time again, where, you, you know, you, you'll have an extended period of small fish, but then randomly there'll be a, you know, a push of bigger fish. You know, I've seen them as far out as like November 14th. And I'm sure they've gone even further than that. So the canal is not over. It's now it's just a game of sticking it out and being diligent. Uh, the other thing that's really popular in Massachusetts, as it is across the region right now, is black fishing. In Massachusetts, it's been really good, um, you know, in the canal region, kind of heading out of the canal into the western end and out into the extreme eastern reaches of Buzzards Bay. It's been good most most everywhere along the Buzzards Bay mainland shore. It's been great out along the Elizabeth Islands. Uh, guys are doing well out around the vineyard as well. And pretty much from there, all the way up to the Rhode Island border, there are plenty of blackfish to be caught. There's a lot of shorts in this particular region, um, for whatever reason. Hard to, hard to put a finger on why. Uh, and there's also not a lot of reports of really big fish. So, like, most of the keepers that I'm hearing about are in that four to six and a half pound range. Solid fish, great eating fish. Not hearing about any double digit fish and the bigger fish like that six and a half to eight and a half pound range. That's about the biggest I've heard of. Um, they're fewer and further between, but they are coming up with enough regularity to make it worth reporting on. Um, Jason Colby from Little Sister Charters seems to have a really good bead on where some of these bigger fish are. And he's putting some nice ones on the boat almost every trip. So um, if you're looking for a boat to jump on in Massachusetts and fill the cooler or fill the fridge or freezer with some uh, with some blackfish fillets, he might be a good guy to, to, uh, to dial up. Uh, let's see, don't forget sea bass is closed in Massachusetts. You are probably gonna catch some of those um, if when you're togging, you gotta throw them all back. But the other thing is you might get some bonus codfish. And that's, you don't have to go to any special places to get these codfish. They seem to be making a slow but noticeable return to inshore waters. And, um, and you got a good shot at getting some, so it's not even a bad, not even a bad idea to bring some cod jigs along. You know, once you've got your blackfish limit, deploy the jigs and see if you can pull some cod as well. And uh, yeah, that's the report that I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. As we move over into Rhode Island, the striper bite has really been centered around South County this week. I haven't heard a lot from the Newport area. I didn't hear anything from up in the Bay. Uh, I don't doubt that there are fish still up in the Bay. Just didn't hear anything this week. But what I have heard is that there's a ton of bait from the west wall all the way to Watch Hill. And the further west you go, the better the concentration seems to be. There are squid, there are adult bunker, peanut bunker, there's mullet. Um, so you've got this diverse sizes of bait, which has brought in diverse sizes of fish. So there are some blitzes of nice sized stripers um, going on in South County. And they've been happening over the last few days. Morning and evening is always going to be your best shot, but you just don't know. If you're out there during the day, you have to be prepared all the time. Um, but some of these fish are well into the 40-inch class, and now we're coming into the, to the full moon. And we're going to have, you know, greatly increased tidal flow coming out of those breachways. And I expect to see the breachways start to pump out some nice fish this week. So if you're looking for a place to go that's pretty easy, um, I would concentrate there. Uh, Watch Hill is another place that's going to you know, it's, it's going to benefit from that increase in tidal flow. All of those shore points from along that whole stretch are going to benefit from that increased tidal flow. And the striper bite should pick up from there. The thing that's been probably the most popular in Rhode Island is black fishing. Um, it's, black fishing just seems to be exploding right now. Rhode Island is, right now, is the hot zone for big ones. Uh, many, many double-digit fish have been caught over the last two weeks. And it has, and that continues now. Um, you're going to see from Mike from Watch Hill Outfitters, they weighed a couple big ones this week. I heard of several other big ones caught on charter boats. Um, you know, fish in the 10 to 12, even 13 pound class are being caught with fair regularity. Um, it's certainly no guarantee that you're going to go catch one. But if you had to pick a state to fish to look for a really big one, it would definitely be Rhode Island. Uh, most of these fish are in 15 to 30 feet of water, and I haven't 
noticed any discernible preference for jigs or rigs uh, this week. Guys seem to be doing well either way. It's pretty easy to fish either one of those in shallower water. As these fish start to move deeper and deeper, you're going to see people favoring the rigs just because it's easier to fish them in deeper water. Um, but a lot of nice fish in the Newport area, Narragansett, all those rocky points out as you move further west. And then even into eastern Long Island Sound, we'll talk about that more in the Connecticut report, but togging is really good. And, um, you know, we're right in the middle of the hot part of the season. It's There's no reason to think that it's going to slow down between now and, I mean, even, even Thanksgiving. Um, so if you're into togging and you haven't gone yet, you're late. Time to get started. Uh, sea bass fishing has also been really good in Rhode Island. We're hearing good reports now from inshore piles and wrecks now, too. It was mostly block and, you know, east grounds and the windmills in that area, but now we're hearing more and more from inshore water. So you're hearing more from Newport. You're hearing more from South County and Point Judith. Uh, the bite's been really good. The sizes have been really good out of Block Island. You got a really uh, reasonable shot at getting a fish over five pounds out there. And... You don't even have to move the anchor, and uh, you may get yourself a 15, 16 pound codfish or two uh, to go along with it. So the bottom fishing's just been great. It's been stellar, really, across the state. And um, and that's the story that I got for you guys around this week. Uh, let's check with Mike from Watch Hill Outfitters before we go, see how they're making out in the western part of Rhode Island. Take it away, Mike. Hey guys, it's Mike at Watch Hill Outfitters. Just checking in for the week. Pretty interesting week. Had a quite a bit of large blackfish come in. A lot of the guys are just starting up. Connecticut opened. Definitely get out there and get you some big tog. Having a great time doing it. The other thing that we have going on is some very large bluefish that I've been hearing reports about. Mainly Block Island and over towards Montauk. But some of the guys are talking about them locally. So check it out. Make sure you got tight leaders and get out there. We also have a really good black sea bass bite going on. Uh, Block Island and Inshore, they're pretty much up and down the coastline, so get you some nice sea biscuits. I uh, got a phone call from my brother Doug this morning talking about a lot of fish coming from one side to the other, down, up and down East Beach, large bass, quite a bit of schoolies, and it just lit up all the way up and down. They're eating peanut bunker, and they're pushing some big bunker. Alby season is still going. Get out there and see if you can get some. Some of the guys are still reporting them. A little bit sparse, but they're still around. Water temps are definitely still high. Get out there on the water. And let's wrap things up in Connecticut as we always do. The striper bite in Connecticut has been hot in just a few zones. Um, probably the hottest area is way out west. And you're going to hear more about that from Max at the end of this report. But I, I, I'm going to talk about it too. Um, been a really good top water bite around the Norwalk Islands and then heading out toward the Housatonic and even into all the way out to Clinton. Uh, there have been some really nice fish taken. Fish well into the 30 pound class. I know there were some really big ones taken last week, you know, into the 50 pound class. Um, so guys are getting these on top water plugs, you know, spook style lures seem to be the, the king right now. Um, could be anything from like a smaller Shimano walk to a nine inch dock. Um, the other thing that's working really well on some of these bigger fish is live bunker. Uh, that's how some of these really big ones were caught last week. And um, so that area has been red hot. Great top water action, great live bait action, and a really good shot at getting maybe the biggest fish of your life. Um, out toward the Connecticut River is the other zone that's been really hot for stripers. And we're just we're seeing over and over again. It's been It's been happening now for... I don't even know, three or four weeks, um, that, that area around the mouth of Connecticut River just seems to hold fish and keep them there. So there are stripers well into the 30 pound class being taken regularly in that area using a variety of methods from kayak, shore, and boat. Um, chunk bunker has really been popular and productive, still have live eels. Guys plugging from the beaches at night with big uh, metal lips or darters, things like that. They're getting some really nice fish as well. Uh, the bass bite in those two areas has definitely been red hot. If you're just looking for slot fish, you just want a couple for the cooler. Uh, well, one for the cooler, I should say. Uh, a good place to try would be Southwest Reef or, uh, or Six Mile. That area there has a lot of slot size fish and um, seems to be producing uh, very well for most of the guys that head that direction. Bluefish wise, the best bluefish 
the best blue fishing is out west. Um, guys diamond jigging some of the deeper uh, rips and rock piles, getting some really nice fishing to the teens out there. Um, there are also some good blitzes of fish like around the mouth of the Housatonic River. Guys are getting them from the surf during the day. Some nice fish, you know, up to 12 pounds. And smaller bluefish can be found at the mouth of almost any estuary right now. You know, some of them are just big snappers, but there's also, you know, some of those fish in that three to six pound range that are being taken fairly regularly in those areas. Black fishing, as I kind of hoped and predicted, got a lot better uh, from last week to this week. I think the, those few days after the opener just weren't great weather and um, and the results suffered. So the guys that went out, a lot of them didn't do well on the opening day or the day after. And even the guys that did, they just, you know, their results were not what you would expect. Since then, I've seen a lot more uh, good reports. I've seen uh, some much nicer fish, up to nine pounds taken in Connecticut waters. Uh, same thing from, same basic deal as it is in Rhode Island. Guys are getting them in like 10 to 30 feet of water for the most part. Um, but as we get more of these cold nights, they're going to start to push a little deeper. So don't be afraid to probe the depths a little bit. Um, no preference between jigs or rigs. Probably the hottest zone uh, has been between the Thames River and the western side of Niantic Bay. Um, and then kind of heading out halfway into the sound from there. Any of those rock piles on any of those areas um, are worth a shot and you know some of the more popular ledges like Sarah's and places like that are also more than worth your time and the results this week have been much better than last week um, seems like Toggin is off to a great start in Connecticut sea bass fishing still best in that central zone um, from you know Niantic straight out toward Montauk and then even all the way out to Montauk. And if you are going to head out that way, don't forget your Albi rod because I have been hearing some better Albi reports from Montauk over the last six or seven days. And uh, what else we got in Connecticut? Uh, porgies are still around. It's definitely slowing down. I haven't heard of any shore caught porgies in a while. Um, but, you know, if you're out there doing the bottom fishing thing and you want to top the cooler off with some porgies, you're going to fish in 25 feet of water or maybe a little bit more. And um, no, the action should be solid. Uh, now let's take a look. Well, actually, now let's check in with Max from Fisherman's World. Let's see what's happening out in the Western Sound. Hey, everyone. Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. The fishing has been red hot lately. We got good fall bass fishing, bluefish up and tight on the bunker schools along our beaches, false albacore, and blackfish. Guys have been doing really good black fishing in the shallows. We've seen fish up to eight pounds this week. The blue fishing has been great. They've been harassing bunker schools and literally pushing the bait up on our beaches. Guys from the surf are scoring good on bluefish with some big bass in the mix. Out on our deeper water reefs, guys are still diamond jigging blues to like 15 pounds. The bass action has been great around the bunker schools and blind casting structure. We've seen fish to over 35 pounds taken this past week. Thanks and good luck to everybody. And now let's wrap up the tournament updates and see what's going on in the Dreamboat Contest. With about a month to go in the Dreamboat Contest, things are heating up. Joseph Yam is back on top after weighing in the 7.3 pound blackfish. Henry Piacentino moved up to third place because Andreas Brundler's 4.9 pound sea bass was just a little heavier than Michael Briggs' catch. Other notable weigh-ins this week was Kenneth Mike's 11-pound sideways blackfish, Kevin Roth's 9.48-pound tog, and Mike Meinhofer's 5-pound sea bass. What species will make the difference? We will find out soon. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber-only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steiger Craft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action. And that's what I've got for you guys this week. I hope, hopefully you will find these reports helpful. Something that I really need to mention is that we have now taken these reports and made them into a podcast. So you don't have to look at my wild gesturing and my silver-tinged beard. Uh, you can just listen to me blabber in your car or put your headphones in and pretend you're working at the office and get a, uh, get a beat on what's going on fishing-wise throughout all of New England. So uh, check us out, you know, just... Go on and search for The Fisherman Magazine, and you will find the podcast, and um, and you can hear what's going on. And if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, at the very least, give us a subscribe here on YouTube and click that little bell down there so you get a notification uh, when we post something new. 
But I would highly recommend heading over to thefisherman.com and see what we have to offer. There's a lot of free content on there. You'll see that we cover everything from Delaware all the way up to Maine. We have reports that cover every state in between. And with a subscription, you get access to all of that. So when you go to visit your in-laws, when they go to Atlantic City for a couple of days, you can click, uh, click into the uh, New Jersey reports, see what's going on down there, and find out where you should be fishing. And then when you got that business trip out to Islip, New York, you could do the same thing. You could be like, hey, what's close to there? You click into the Long Island reports and uh, see what's going on. See where you should be fishing out there. So it's, it's a really useful tool for anglers, especially if you travel. Um, but you're also getting that hyper-local information and you're getting some of the best how-to and where-to from some of the best writers that New England has ever produced. Well, New England and the whole region has ever produced. Uh, stop on by and check us out. Until next week, thanks for watching. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.